They don't look any different to ordinary tomatoes, which is very much the point. But these have been genetically edited to produce high levels of vitamin D. Normal tomatoes, like most fruit and veg, contain virtually none. But just one of these has as much vitamin D as two eggs or a serving of tuna. They used a gene editing technique called CRISPR-Cas9 to tweak the tomato's DNA. We talk about genetic tweezers, <laughs> so it really is very, very small nature equivalents. It can happen naturally or it could happen naturally, but the amount of work and time re required to make that change and then to select it and breed it in is prohibitively long. The technique is fundamentally different to previous incarnations of genetic modification, or GM. Most GM products contain genes from another organism that confer a benefit. A type of GM cotton, for example, has a gene from a bacterium to make it resistant to insect pests. By contrast, gene editing inserts molecular machinery borrowed from bacteria to delete, swap or repeat genes already in the plant's genetic code before removing the foreign DNA afterwards. The difference is a crucial one, because this week the government will put forward a bill making it much easier to bring gene-edited crops to market. And they're closer than you might think. This plot is the first crop of gene-edited wheat growing anywhere outdoors in Europe. And the researchers behind it hope that this change in the law will be the first step to taking crops like this out of field trials and seeing them benefit society. It's the first positive step in crop biotechnology regulation uh, in Europe with the UK for um, a generation, 25 years. And uh, I've suffered all through that period. <laughs> We've yeah. been waiting for this for a long time and I think uh, uh, it's really a positive step. This wheat has been edited to make less of the cancer-causing compound acrylamide when it's fried. But researchers are also looking at editing out common wheat allergens or making the crop more drought or pest resistant. It's really important that we don't miss out on the next biotech revolution, which is gene editing. And that is already off and running in some parts of the world. The United States, for example, several years, Canada, Brazil, Argentina. Just this year we see China and India moving on, on biotech, uh, on gene editing. So really important that we keep up. But opponents of gene editing dispute claimed similarities to traditional breeding and say the law change is a step towards more elaborate genetic engineering. It's entirely misleading to say that gene editing doesn't involve the insertion of foreign genes. In fact, gene editing is a, a suite of technologies that range from a simple SNP to the complex insertion of foreign genes. And the traits that get scientists really excited, things like disease resistance and drought resistance, simply cannot be achieved without these complex technological interventions. With gene editing, scientists have proven they've got a tool that could revolutionise food and farming. But they have some way to go to prove real benefits to society and the environment. Tom Clark, Sky News, Norwich.